I'm Joe Giliotti, PhD, and I am your guide for this journey you are about to embark on. Now to survive here in this generation, you're going to have to know a few things. Come along for the ride. I will show you how to live. of How to Live. I'm your host and professor and teacher guy, Joe Giliotti, PhD. Today's episode, folks, is all about how to be popular. Everyone wants to be liked. Everyone wants to be friendly and have a lot of friends as well. So just how do you be popular? Well, folks, our first lesson today, we will dive into just how to be popular. The first lesson is... Be respectful. Popularity. What is it made of? How does a person get to be popular with lots of people? and have a few close friends, too. Let's watch and see what makes people like one person and not another. Hey, Jerry, there's that new girl in our math class. Oh, yes. Her name's Carolyn Ames. She's a swell kid. Why? You know her? Not very well. I wish I did. I don't know what it is, but there's something about her you like. Well, she always looks nice to start with. Yeah, especially when you compare it with some of the weird characters in this place. Mm. Yoo-hoo! Ginny thinks that she has the key to popularity, parking in cars with the boys at night. When Jerry brags about taking Ginny out, he learns that she dates all the boys, and he feels less important. What about Ginny? Does that make her really popular? Do the boys and girls like her? Is she welcome to join this group? Hi, Betty, Ellie. You can rest your tray here, Jimmy, for a minute. Thanks. Say, Wally, how's the play coming along? Oh, okay, Jenny. Here, here Jenny. No, Thanks, girls Jerry. who park in cars are not really popular. Not even with the boys they park with. Not when they meet at school or elsewhere. Nothing like being Miss Popularity. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Meow, meow. Okay, Ellie. Now there's a girl that'd really get my vote. Let's ask her over, huh? Okay, yeah, I'll go ahead, ahead, Ellie. Why not? Now, why do they invite Carolyn to join their group when Jenny wasn't welcome? Is it because they like the way she looks and dresses? Because she seems as interested in girls as in boys? Because they've heard no scandal about her? I guess you know everybody, don't you, Carolyn? Hi. Oh, hi. Hi. Well, I see you around. I don't Betty know. Richards, Carolyn Ames. Betty's the lead in our class play. Oh, yes. I looked in on it so yesterday. We're all in on it in one way or another. I'm on the costume committee. And Jerry and I are stagehands. Hmm. Two among a dozen or so. How about you, Wally? Where do you fit in all this? Oh, I'm a one-man team that does a job with no glory attached. I gather the props together, and <laughs> boy, what a headache. You sound like you need a helper. Could I lend a hand? Would you? I mean, would you really? Sure, I'd like it. I don't know anything about props, but I could learn. Well, I need some help too, Carolyn. Hey, lay off. I saw her first. <laughs> See, we ought to get together and talk over those props a little. Could you meet me backstage at 3.15? Oh, that'd be fine, Wally. See you at rehearsal. I think okay. maybe I'll take Carolyn to the dance Saturday night. Well, better go ahead and ask her if we could work out a double date. Ah, Saturday's soon enough.
Hello. Oh, hello, Wally. I, I was wondering if you'd like to go to the Strand to see a movie Saturday night, and then go over to Teen Town, maybe. Well, yes, I... Or if you'd rather go with the gang on a skating party and weenie roast, we'd have to leave earlier for that, though. But we get home at a decent time. Oh, the skating sounds like loads of fun. Wally has used a lot of common sense in putting the invitation this way. It shows he has thought about what Carolyn might like. And he has implied his price range, so she will have some idea of what he can afford when she makes her choice. Carolyn likes it better this way, too. It's doing the girl no favor to leave it entirely up to her. It puts her on a spot. All right, Wally. On Saturday at 5, then. Bye. Well, that phone call didn't go on for hours. A pretty sensible attitude toward telephone conversations. Carolyn keeps a date calendar. Not a bad idea. She'll never have the embarrassment of forgetting a date or of being ready an hour too late. Hmm, that's a good note to write yourself, any night. But especially when you're getting ready for a date. There, you too can do a manicure, Ellie. I might even know what to wear it with tonight if I only knew if Bill's dug up transportation to the dance. You sure you knew to phone you here at my house? I told him three times. I'll have to be getting home to dinner pretty soon. Take my advice. Think twice before you start going steady. Don't you ever go out with anyone else at all? Nope. Well, don't you ever want to? On nights like this, I do. I never know what he's planned. He just says, will you decide, Ellie? <laughs> I should think you'd run out of ideas. Oh, I'm getting to that point. Hello? Oh, hello, Jerry. Oh, the props are coming along all right. That's good. Hey, Carolyn, how about a date? Well, uh, I don't, I don't know, Jerry. When did you have in mind? Well, what are you doing tonight? I'm awfully sorry, but I have a date for tonight, Jerry. Tomorrow? No, I'm sorry. Well, call me early next week, Jerry. Okay, Carolyn. Thanks a lot, just the same. Goodbye. <laughs> Can you imagine that, Ellie? He wanted a date for tonight. Sounds like you're asking her so late went over like a lead balloon, brother. Maybe so. Well, let's see what else we can do about tonight. No, it isn't too promising for Jerry. But after all, it's no compliment to any girl to call her so late she thinks she's a very last resort. And sometimes a girl likes a chance to get ready for a date. Hello, Wally. Come on in. Hello, yourself. Gee, look at you all. All ready and right on time, too. That's a good deal. Thanks. Mother, are you busy? I'd like you to meet my father. Dad, this is Wally Johnson. Well, hello, Wally. How do you do, Mr. Ames? Here I am, darling. And I suppose this is Wally. That's right, Mrs. Ames. How do you do? Well, it's nice meeting you. Oh, excuse me a second. I forgot my scarf. I'll be right back. Don't let me interrupt your eating, Mr. Ames. Well, thanks, Wally. I was just looking into the world of events before we go to dinner. I tricked him into taking me out tonight. I understand you're having a little trouble with the props or the play. Oh, not too many now. Much as I hate to admit it, though, Carolyn has hunted down a lot of things that we couldn't find any place. Here I am, all set. Oh, Carolyn, I made some brownies today. Maybe you and Wally would like them when you get back. There's some milk in the icebox, too, isn't there? How does that sound? Gee, that sounds good. We'll take you up on it, Mrs. Ames. Thanks. Carolyn and her mother have found one way a girl can repay a boy for entertaining her. A bite to eat at her house will save him money. Perhaps they'll bring another couple home with them. That would be fun. 
folks know when we'll be home? We'll be home before 11, Mother. Wally and Carolyn are saved the embarrassment of the argument about coming in at night. That was settled before Wally arrived. The hour was decided after considering such things as where Carolyn and Wally are going on their date, whether tomorrow is a school day, and how many dates she has had recently. Do you have your key, dear? The family knows Carolyn will stick to her word. All right. Have fun, you two. I'll take good care of her, Mrs. Ames. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Wally felt at ease with Carolyn's parents and will be eager to return to her home. They liked him, too. <laughs> he is proud to be with Carolyn because she looks well, is friendly with everyone, and is considerate of their feelings. She likes him for these same reasons, and also because he is fun to be with. Home, parents, and personality all help boys and girls to be popular. Now that you know how to be respectful, it's time for our next lesson here on how to live when it comes to how to be popular. You have to be outgoing here, folks. You can't just sit in a, in a small corner. You have to be outgoing. You can't be shy. I mean, if I talk like this, you, I, I, you know, I wouldn't be very popular. But I am very popular because I am a professor and a PhD. So our next lesson here in how to be popular class, it's not so bad. But when school's out and the others go off to enjoy themselves, well, if you're what they call a shy guy, that's when you really feel it. The loneliness of being new in town. You don't know how to make people like you, and you find yourself holding a grudge against them. You're standing on the outside looking in. You might have something to contribute to their conversation, but nobody cares whether you do or not. There's a barrier and you don't know how to begin breaking it down. You imagine they keep watching the way you look, the way you act. They think you're different. So, you head for home. What else? But still, you can't forget that you're alone, an outsider. Hello, Phil. How's everything? Oh, okay, I guess, Dad. Your record transmitter, microphone coming. Oh, all right, I guess. I know it isn't either. I can't figure out where to connect in the oscillator. I know I have to connect it into the amplifier, but where? It just doesn't fit in. Why not a store and get more information? And by the way, how are things going in school? Oh, okay, Dad. But school here isn't like it was back in Morristown. Well, you know, son, maybe school is like your radio. This oscillator will do its work well. But as you said, you still have to fit it in so it can work with all the other parts. I know what you're driving at, Dad, but I don't think I ever will fit in, not here. I'm different from the guys in this town. Well, as far as that goes, Phil, everybody's different. That's what makes people interesting. Maybe. You know, when we moved here this summer, I had quite a time making friends in a new office where everybody else knew each other. What'd you do, Dad? Well, that's beside the point, son. What works for one doesn't necessarily work for another. But I bet the other men didn't look at your clothes all the time. Well, what makes you think they look at your clothes? Oh, because the other fellas wear sweaters or just shirts, not a regular suit like mine. Well, wear a sweater, then. But clothes alone won't... Phil, what about the other fellows? What do they do? What do they like? Gosh, Dad, I don't know. I never noticed. Only I know it's not radios. Perhaps that's the reason you don't know. You don't notice what the others are interested in. Why not try to find out? How, Dad? 
Well, you might try watching, listening. Pick out the most popular boys and girls in school and keep an eye on them. Try to figure out why people like them. Not that you'll ever be just like any of them, but you might learn something. Well, see you at dinner. Now there's an idea. Maybe a good idea. Worth a try anyway. And tomorrow's not too soon to start. Pick out the most popular boys and girls in school and keep an eye on them. Who are they now? Some of them are right here in this class. Andy McIntyre, for instance. People like him, all right. Chick Gallagher rates high in popularity, too. There's Jane Davenport. She's popular with boys and girls. And Jack Gilbert. What's he got that makes people like him so much? Andy's got something to say and Jack's listening. He really seems interested. Come to think of it, Jack's always interested in what people are talking about. Maybe that's why he hits it off so well with everybody. Anyhow, Andy thinks he's a great guy. No, that's too easy, just listening. But what's this? Sounds like Jane's caught on to the same thing. She's listening. Hearing about Helen's collection of menus and liking it. That makes her kingpin with Helen. Maybe there is something in this business of being a good listener. But still, there must be more to getting along with people than just wearing a sweater and listening. What's the matter, Bob? Handle stuck? Yeah, I can't get it open. Oh, here, let me try. It's a trick to some of these. There. Gee, thanks a lot, Chick. Now, why didn't you think of that? Chick's always doing things for people. And it pays off in friends. Boy, that sure is one tough history assignment we have for Friday. Wish I could find some good outside reading material. I found a swell book that covers everything Miss Carson wants us to know. It's called The uh, Last Days of Monarchism by Henry Darrell. You can get it at the library. I'm sure glad you told me about it. I'll get it this afternoon. Thanks a lot, Bob. It's okay, Chick. You dope. You knew about that book. You could have been the guy that helped a guy. There it is again. Even when you bump into people, they hardly know you're alive. <laughs> You're alone, bud. Alone in the crowd. But keep looking around. Try to find out what the score is. Look at Jack and Beezy over there. Girls seem to like them. Why? What's the angle? They do act kind of polite. At least they seat the girls and give their orders to the waiter. They aren't loud like some of the guys. Cherry Coke, chocolate Coke, milkshake, and mullet. Double chocolate and mullet. Okay, I got it. Oh, jeez. Excuse me, please. I've got the orders from my table. Uh, just help me out during rush hour, Bob. Gee, thanks a lot, Chick. That's swelling. Okay, Bob. Hey, girl. There's Chick being helpful again. I can't quite decide. Why don't you have two white stripes with me, Chick? I love the way it's Hey, don't tell me you two are still talking clothes. Was this a plot to squelch all males present? <laughs> Oh, Phil, sit down. Make yourself at home. Oh, Good for you. Pretty good. Come on, sit down. Hello, everybody. Okay. We men need some support to run down this girly shatter. Hey, you want them all, don't you? 
Yo, Bob. The topic of our discussion is the mix and mix for our night at school. You're going, aren't you? I don't know, Chick. Uh, I haven't got a date yet. Well, grab yourself a girl and come along. It's not going to be a real party. Just a class game together for some fun. I'd like to, Chick. Yeah, I sure would. Yeah, sure would be something to take Mary Lou to the mixer. Wonder if she already has a date. Well, how's the oscillator coming along? Hi, Dad. Oh, I haven't quite got it working yet. But, you know that other business we were talking about? Oh, I've been following your advice. How about it? Find out anything? Yeah, Dad, I think I did. It looks like people who get along best with other people are, well, the people who think about the other guy. They make a point of listening to what others have to say and watching for ways to do things for them, being polite toward them. Do you suppose it's sort of a case of thinking so much about other people that you don't have much time to sell? Well, perhaps that's right. Maybe the best way to find out is to try it the next chance you get. You know, Dad, there's a mixer Friday night I uh, wasn't going to go, but in the drugstore the other day, Chick said I ought to come. Good idea, Phil. Well, Dad, there is a girl I'd like to take, Mary Lou Wright. But I'm not sure she'd go with me. Never even talked to her. I'd probably fall all over myself. Besides, she's popular. She's probably got a date by now. Well, it is pretty late to ask a girl. Why don't you just go stag? You needn't worry about doing anything wrong, Phil. You act all right. Just do and say whatever seems most natural. Well, Dad, maybe... Maybe it will be easier after I've had a chance to talk to her at the mixer. <laughs> you know what? I kind of think this is going to fit in after all. This is it, sink or swim. Oh, oh, there's Mary Lou. She did come with another guy. Beezy Barnes. What now? Piano game. Look at Beezy, listening first to one boy, then another. It's funny the way people flock around a good listener. But what's this? They're talking about radios. It's right down your alley. They're asking Beezy about Penny Stock. You know the answer to that one. You could tell him. She just a butt in. Beezy's still stuck. He really needs help. Help? That's it. An offer of help. That's welcome anywhere. It's not hard to fit yourself into a conversation. A mention of a similar problem in connection with the record player. They are interested in that record player. They are interested in that shy guy. They know he's alive now. And strangely enough, he's just discovered that they're alive. Of course they'd like to see the record player. Of course they'll come over. Tomorrow afternoon. I just have to do a little more soldering and connect the oscillator into the amplifier and everything will fit in. Oh, Phil, could you have it ready by next week and bring it over to my house? I guess so. Some of the gang's coming over Thursday night and we could have a lot of fun with it. You will come, won't you? Well, one shy guy is on his way. Not that his worries are over. 
he'll still have his moments of doubt, of hesitation, of fear that he might do something wrong. But he can face these problems now because he knows that he's not really different. And while he's discovered only a few of many ways to overcome shyness, he's discovered that it can be done. And that's the main thing, isn't it? Okay, did you get all that? Hopefully so. Now that you're not shy anymore, we're going to teach you the next lesson here on how to be popular. And that... is how to be social. Be social. Hello, Eileen. This is Jean. I just had a letter from my brother, and guess what? He's bringing his roommate home from college. Mother said we can have a party for him, so I was wondering if you could come over tonight and help me plan it. Yes, Nora's coming too. This is one party that just has to turn out right. Well, the purpose of a party is to have fun together. And a successful party needs planning and skill. Whether it's a special carnival designed for gay entertainment, or a game party in a home, a birthday party, a holiday party, they all take planning, and they should all be fun. Now, the party Jean, Nora, and Eileen are planning. What of its purpose? The main idea is to introduce Steve to the game. And Show him a wonderful time. <laughs> yeah, and show everyone a nice time. Right. Now listen, this is what we have to plan. A guest list, invitations, refreshments, and entertainment. Now, a guest list. Who will we ask? There'll be the three of us on our dates, and I suppose we could have an extra couple and two extra girls for Jim and Steve. Mm -hmm. Now, who do you think, Nora? Well... Let's have Alice and Ted come. They're nice, and they're usually in our gang. Margie's lots of fun. The fellows would like her. That's right, Eileen. And let's ask Dot. We certainly had a wonderful time at her party last month. Oh, I'll say. Hmm. We all enjoy being together, but is anyone left out? I don't think so. Well, that's our guest list. Now, invitations. Should we write? Dear Alice, would you like to come to a party at my house Saturday, March 24th at 8 p.m. and so on? Why bother to write? This is just an informal party. Let's just phone everyone. Sure. Good. We'll phone tomorrow. <laughs> Next business, refreshments. Yeah. We have to feed the men. <laughs> and the girls, too. Especially you. Gee, <laughs> thanks. Does it show? <laughs> <laughs> well, we want something to eat and something to drink. Refreshment. How about hot chocolate and sandwiches? I'll fix the sandwiches. Well, thanks, Eileen. Suppose I talk it over with Mother and get her suggestions. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, now next is entertainment. We want to show Steve a good time, but, well, we don't know too much about what he likes. The best thing I know for breaking the ice and getting people acquainted is some good mixer games. Oh, but they can be such a bore if you don't have good ones. Well, let's go to the library and get some good magazines and books and find some really good games. Oh, terrific. I'll do that. Oh, good. Then this party can just be an informal, get acquainted sort of party, and we'll have games for entertainment. Mm -hmm. Well, there are still many details to be planned, but the basic things are settled. Guest list, invitations, refreshments, entertainment. All these things should be planned to fit together well. It's the big night. The planning and preparation will help make a good party. But what else makes a good party? It's the skill of the hosts and the skill of the guests in making the party fun for everyone. Here we are, gang. 
Step right in. Hi, Hi. Oh, Hi. Oh, I'm so glad you came. Finally made it. Wonderful. First, getting everyone acquainted and into the spirit of the party. How's it done? Come in here, Steve. We'll wait here for the girls to put their coats away. Okay, Jean. Well, Steve, what do you think of our game? What you've met of them, I mean. Oh, they're swell. But what's this about me being uh, the guest of honor? Oh, that's Jean's way of keeping you quiet. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Margie and Dottie were just thrilled to think you college men would call for them. Oh, a couple of campus bigwigs we are. <laughs> you bet your life. <laughs> oh, I think our guests are arriving. Excuse me. I hope you like our friends, Steve. Well, I hope they'll like me. <laughs> they will. Hi, how are you? Oh, hello, Eileen. Good to see you. Oh, hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Are we the first ones here? Oh, no, Margie oh. and Dottie are here. Oh, hi, Jean. How have you been? Hello, Paul. I'm so glad you could come. Well, you can't keep me away. <laughs> Eileen, this is Steve. Hello, Steve. Hello, Eileen. Aren't you the uh, party planner I've heard so much about? <laughs> well, and this is Paul Johnson, our star tackle. Hi, Steve. Glad to know you, Paul. Let me take your coat. Notice Paul. how Jean oh, thanks, helps her guests get acquainted. I'll go with you. Oh, no, never Well, mind. the no. party is off to a good start. Guests are on time. Everyone's out to have fun and to help others fun. And when all the guests have arrived and have been introduced, the games begin. Well-planned, well-chosen games. First, a simple get-together game. Each one may ask questions and try to guess his own identity. This mixes the group well, and besides, it provides a means of choosing partners for the next game. Having fun together makes a party. This means both hosts and guests. Whenever any of the guests begin to lose interest in a game, the host should start a new game, so fun together can continue. And, of course, the guests have a part in this, too. Each one should try to make the games fun. Each should take part in what the group is doing. And if some guests forget this, well, anyone, even another guest, can help get the entire group together again. Oh, Nora, right. Jim started that hat making contest that you right. like so much. Come yeah, on. Like yeah. 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 Make a hat uh -huh. And in the end, we're going to give the prize to the best hat. Oh, All right, now here are your materials. Oh, hey, a hat making contest? Well, this will reveal some talent. The party is going well again. Have you noticed some of the skills of the guests that help keep the party fun for all? Let's look for others. And did you ever play rhythm? One, four. I can see you guys again. One, three. Three, two. Two, seven. Six, seven, three. two. Oh, no. <laughs> you broke out a turn. Yeah, you're out. out. Turn. Yeah, you're yeah. out, too, because six. you did that. I was six. I didn't eat, no, as long as you got one. Seven. seven. Or how about charades? Second. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, turn going on. All right, here we go. We really uh, have had good ones. Oh, 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 oh. And then, at just the right moment... Is anybody hungry? Everything's ready. Oh, yeah. Is anybody hungry? Well, a little snack certainly is pleasant about this time of evening. Simple food, buffet style, an informal way to serve refreshments. Each one can serve himself and help the others, too. And while everyone finishes eating, a little more spontaneous, unplanned fun. Oh, do you play, Steve? Does he well, play? Show him, Steve. Oh. Okay.
part of a good party is knowing when to go home, soon after refreshments have been served. Now, let's think back. What made this party such a good one? What do we want to do next time? If you are going to give a party, plan that party around a purpose. Choose your guests carefully. Plan invitations, plan for refreshments and entertainment. Then, practice to be a skillful host. Make sure the party is fun for everyone. And when you're invited to a party, practice the skills of a good guest. Be on time, ready for fun. Take part in the party. Help everyone around you to have a good time. Leave on time, and courteously too, thanking your host sincerely for the good time you've had. All these things help to make a good party, a party that's fun for all. to just about do it for our very key important lessons on how to be popular. I thank you folks for enjoying this episode and if you didn't enjoy this one, well you'll enjoy the next one. I just have a feeling. I'm Joe Giuliani, your host, professor, your go-to guy, and a PhD. And I thank you for watching this latest edition of How to Live. We'll see you next time.